This video is brought to you by eapfoundation.com, the website for all your academic English needs. This video looks at idioms in academic English. Idioms are fairly common in everyday English. For example, you might know the phrase raining cats and dogs, which means raining very heavily. Or the idiom break a leg, which means good luck, said before a performance. For example, when an actor goes on stage. Now, most idioms are quite informal which begs the question, are idioms used in academic English? The answer to that, obviously, is yes, otherwise I wouldn't be making this video. In fact, I've just used an academic English idiom, the phrase, beg the question, which means to call somebody to ask a question, or to assume something is true, but it is not yet proven. So this video has three parts. First, we'll have a very brief definition of idioms, just so that we're clear what we're talking about. Then I'll give some background to idioms in academic English, including the results of two research articles. And finally, which is the main part of the video, we'll see 21 academic English idioms in detail. So first, what are idioms? Idioms are expressions which are fixed. For example, we can say raining cats and dogs, but we can't say cats and dogs are falling from the sky. It doesn't have the same meaning. We can say break a leg, but we can't say I hope your leg breaks. Idioms are multi-word expressions, in other words at least two words. In fact most idioms are three or four words in length. Idioms are well established. For example, beg the question has been around since the 16th century. Raining cats and dogs since the 17th century. Break a leg is actually a fairly recent idiom, originating sometime in the 1940s. Finally, idioms are usually rather difficult to understand. That's because you can't usually deduce the meaning from the individual words. For example, you might know the words rain and cats and dogs, but that doesn't help you understand the expression raining cats and dogs. Second then, let's look at idioms in academic English. So there are a couple of studies which have identified idioms used in academic contexts. The first of these, from 2003, by Simpson and Mendes, looked at idioms in academic speech. A more recent study was conducted by Julia Miller of the University of Adelaide in 2019, and this considered idioms in both academic speech and academic writing. So Miller's study identified 170 idioms for spoken academic English and 36 for written academic English. And the 21 idioms that we'll see later are actually the most frequent ones from the list of idioms for written academic English. So Miller's study found that idioms in spoken academic texts occurred with a frequency of 835 per million words, which is a little under 0.1%. To put that in context of other academic lists, the academic word list covers around 10% of academic texts, while the academic collocation list covers around 1.4%. So idioms obviously are not very frequent in academic English, but they are still used in academic English. Why study idioms? Well, productive use of idioms, in other words in speaking and writing, will help students use language more naturally, and therefore become part of the academic discourse community. Perhaps more importantly, receptive knowledge, in other words listening or reading, will help students to understand spoken or written texts more easily. And this is important because unlike collocations, where if you know the two words, you will understand what the collocation means, with idioms, as I've just explained, even though you know all of the words, that doesn't help you to understand the meaning. So let's move on now to the main part of the video, which is 21 academic English idioms. And to make these idioms easier to understand, I've collected them into different categories. So there are body idioms, action idioms, power idioms, idioms with the word gold, idioms with the word line, and a few other idioms that don't really fall into any category. First then, let's look at body idioms. So two very common idioms in academic English, which many students may already be familiar with, are on the one hand and on the other hand. On the one hand means from one point of view, on the other hand means from a different point of view. On the other hand, which can be used on its own, is actually the most common idiom in academic English, in both speaking and writing. While on the one hand, is the third most common idiom in both speaking and writing. You can see some numbers there and I'll just briefly explain those because I'll be using them throughout the video. 
So these numbers come from Miller's study and the green ones are for writing, the blue ones for speaking. The first line shows the rank of the idiom for writing and the frequency per million words, while the second row shows the rank for speaking and the frequency per million words for speaking. So as I've just said, on the other hand, is the most common idiom for both writing and speaking, with a frequency of 88.12 per million words for writing, and also quite high frequency 64.11 for speaking. So let's see some examples of these in real sentences. Nuclear energy, on the one hand, can provide huge amounts of power. On the other hand, it produces toxic waste, which must be treated very carefully. Another example, public transport has many benefits, for instance helping to reduce air pollution. On the other hand, it is less convenient than travelling by private car. So the second example uses only on the other hand. And that's the reason why this idiom is more common than on the one hand, because it is often used on its own. A couple of uses notes here. So for the idiom on the one hand, the word the can always be omitted, although it's much more common to use the. Miller's study actually considered this to be a separate idiom, and you can see this idiom has quite low frequency for both writing and speaking. In this video I'm going to consider the idiom on one hand as being the same idiom as on the one hand. For the idiom on the other hand, the word hand can be omitted only when this idiom is combined with on the one hand. And it's actually quite common to omit this word. So in the first example we could say nuclear energy on one hand can provide huge amounts of power, on the other it produces toxic waste which must be treated very carefully. So the next idiom is in the hands of someone. And this has two possible meanings, controlled or owned by someone, and in the care of someone. The first meaning is actually more common in academic English, although the picture shows the second meaning. And this is quite a common idiom, the fourth most common idiom in academic English writing. So an example, the stability of an economy lies in the hands of its investors and borrowers. In other words, the stability of an economy is controlled by its investors and borrowers. A second example, in the 18th century, power in the country was concentrated in the hands of a few corporations. The next body idiom is go hand in hand with, which means be closely related to something and happening at the same time or as a result. So this idiom is a bit less common than the ones we've just seen. The level of crime in a city tends to go hand in hand with the level of poverty. In other words, the level of crime and the level of poverty are closely related, and it's likely the level of crime is the result of the level of poverty. The next body idiom is rule of thumb, and this means an approximate way of doing or measuring something. And this idiom actually is not very common in academic speaking. In fact, it's the lowest ranked one in this video, ranked 91 in speaking, but 16 in writing. So an example sentence, as a rule of thumb, an increase of $10 for a barrel of oil reduces global output by 0.5% after one year. Bloomberg Economics, 2011. So in other words, this is not an exact equation, but it's an approximate measure. The next body idiom is on the face of it. And this means seemingly based on the evidence. And it's often used to contrast with the real situation. This idiom actually ranks 20th in both writing and speaking. For example, on the face of it, these measures seem to have been effective. However, if the long-term consequences are considered, it is clear that this is not the case. So in this sentence, the first idea is contrasted with the second idea, which shows the real situation. The final body idiom is bear in mind. Mind is not quite part of the body, but it's close enough, so I'll consider it here. And this means to remember or consider when making a decision. And this is the fifth most common idiom for academic writing and the second for academic speaking, so this is a very common idiom. A couple of grammar and usage points here. First, the verb bear is an irregular verb. Bear, bore, born. Second, the phrase bear in mind often combines with the word must or should or be important to, and it's usually followed by that, as we'll see in the example. It is important to bear in mind that social distancing is only effective in combination with other measures.
Next, let's move on to action idioms. So the first of these is in the long run, which means over a long period of time. And the second is its opposite, in the short run, which means over a short period of time. These idioms are especially common in economics, although they're also common in business, with in the long run being used more frequently than in the short run, possibly because when we look at an economy or a business, we're more concerned about what happens in the long run than the short run. And both of these idioms are actually more common in written academic English than spoken academic English. So, for example, researchers concluded that the new policy reduced the company's growth by 25% in the short run and 55% in the long run. So in this example, the long run effects are more significant than those in the short run. The next action idiom is a step further, which means to make an improvement or advancement. And this often combines with the verb take, take something a step further. And there's also the idiom a step back, which means to make something worse, which is the opposite of a step further. A meta study actually combined these two idioms. Again, these are quite common in both academic writing, where it ranks 10th, and speaking, where it ranks 9th. For example, Freud took this idea a step further in his work, The Interpretation of Dreams. In other words, Freud advanced this idea in The Interpretation of Dreams. The deal represented a step back for the company. In other words, the deal made things worse for the company. The final action idiom is come into play, which means to become an important factor. For example, globalization is one of the reasons for increasing urban populations in developing countries. However, there are other factors that come into play, such as natural disasters and civil war. Next, let's look at power idioms. So there are just two of these. The first is driving force, which means someone or something with the power to make things happen. This idiom is often used with the word behind. For example, nationalism was one of the driving forces behind World War I. The second action idiom is the balance of power, which means the way power is distributed between rival groups or countries. Because of the meaning, this idiom is especially common in politics, history and law. And it frequently occurs with the verb shifting, which means changing. And it's common in academic writing and speaking, but especially in academic speaking, where it's the fourth most common idiom. For example, following World War II, the balance of power shifted from Europe to the United States and the Soviet Union. In other words, before World War II, European countries were the most powerful in the world, whereas after it, it was the United States and the Soviet Union. Next, let's look at two idioms with the word gold. The first of these is gold standard. And this actually has a literal, a real meaning, as well as an idiomatic meaning. And it's useful to know both. So the literal meaning is a monetary standard where the value of a currency is defined by a fixed amount of gold. The idiomatic meaning, which derives from the literal meaning, is something that is the best example of its kind and is used to measure how good other similar things are. So the literal meaning is especially common in economics. So if you're studying economics and you see the phrase gold standard, it's probably the literal meaning rather than used as an idiom. The idiomatic meaning is especially common in medicine, where it's used so frequently that it actually makes it the ninth most common idiom in academic English writing. For example, Although endoscopic carpal tunnel release has become popular for the treatment of carpal tunnel syndrome, open carpal tunnel release remains the gold standard procedure. So that's a rather technical sentence, but what it means is although the first form is popular, the second form remains the best procedure. The second idiom with the word gold is golden age. And this is a period of time when a particular art or business or so on was very successful. So this idiom is mainly used in social sciences, for example, history, economics, sociology. In history, it's just used as an idiom, but for non-history subjects, it's often enclosed by quotation marks. For example, the period of 1950 to 1970 is considered to be the golden age of growth for industrialized countries, 
which enjoyed a 3.7% increase in real GDP per capita per year. Next, let's consider idioms with the word line. And there are two of these. The first is along the lines of, which means roughly similar to something. And this is quite common in both writing and speaking. In fact, it ranks seventh for writing. For example, although there is no formal convention for designating countries developed or developing, OECD 2021, for analysis, the countries in this study will be divided along the lines of the OECD classification. The second idiom with the word line is the bottom line. And again, this has a literal and an idiomatic meaning. And it's useful again to understand both. So the literal meaning is the line on an account statement showing a person or a company's total profit or loss. And the idiomatic meaning derives again from the literal meaning. The idiomatic meaning being the most important aspect of something. So this idiom is number 21 in our list for academic writing idioms, but it's used much more frequently in speaking, where it ranks number 6. An example sentence, when determining a CEO's performance, rather than focusing on profit, the bottom line of the position is the growth of the company. In other words, the growth of the company is the most important factor. So finally, let's look at other idioms. There are four idioms left. The first of these is in light of or in the light of, which means because of, specifically because of some new information. The phrase in light of without the word the is often followed by this. And this is actually the second most frequent idiom for academic English writing. For example, the experiment was extremely dangerous. In light of this, extra precautions for safety were taken. Another example, in light of the evidence, it is clear that major changes need to be made. Next, in its own right, which means on its own and not because of something else. Again, this is a common idiom in academic writing, more common in writing than speaking. Marketing for the brand originally depended heavily on the parent company. Now, however, the brand is established in its own right and has its own marketing division. In other words, the brand no longer depends on the parent company. The next idiom is bad news. And this means someone or something unpleasant. This idiom ranks 18th in both writing and speaking. An example sentence, patients need to be reassured that receiving a positive result is not always bad news, since the test has only 60% accuracy rate. And the final idiom is last resort, which means a solution that's chosen only if there are no other options. And again, this idiom is more common in academic writing than academic speaking. The side effects of the medication are extreme, and it should only be taken as a last resort. So that's it. We've seen briefly what idioms are. We've seen the background to idioms in academic English. And we've seen in detail 21 academic idioms. Just to summarise, here is a complete list of the idioms that we've seen. As I said earlier in the video, these are the most frequent idioms for academic English writing. However, as we've seen, many of these are also very frequent in academic English speaking. In fact, they account for 14 of the first 21 idioms for academic speaking. And we've actually also seen number 22 and 23 on the list for speaking. We also had a bonus idiom, beg the question, which is number 23 in the list for writing. In case you're interested, these are the academic idioms for speaking that we didn't see. At the end of the day, take on board, by and large, take for granted, across the board, at the back of one's mind, and sit on the fence. If you'd like to see these idioms in another video, let me know in the comments below. So you can find more information on this and other academic English topics on the website, eapfoundation.com. As always, you can find a worksheet to accompany this video, which will help you practice to use these idioms go to eapfoundation.com forward slash news forward slash social.